That is in addition to other enrollments that will be in our conventional primary school. We have more than 10,000 of these girls that are receiving learning in our conventional schools. Under the Could you be more audible for our people who cannot hear you well? Could you be more audible? If you can come over that to the you me now? microphone, yeah. Yes. Are you hearing now. me now? It's better. Yeah. Are you hearing yeah. me now? Yeah. Uh, under that program, we enroll uh, more than 10,000 girls and we have provided them with all the necessary learning facilities. That is uniform, uh, textbooks, exercise books, and what have you. Uh, we are also given cash transfer to their parents, uh, that's 3,000 per head per term, just to encourage the encourage the, the, the female guardians of the children to allow them to go to school, at least to prevent them from working as you are in school hours. Uh, and uh, they have started proper learning before the, 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 the pandemic, the, the corona. And, and also under nomadic education, I think uh, Sam, we may have to round up. We are giving you two more minutes to round up. All right. Under uh, yeah. nomadic education, we are able to enroll about 4,000 children. And we provided about 35 schools for them. We are also providing feeding, that is breakfast for them. We provided uniforms for them and uh, all necessary learning materials. And uh, they have also started. Uh, learning proper before the pandemic episode. Uh, you see uh, the level of enrollment we are under. We have already set uh, also committees and are going around now to, 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 to improve on the enrollment. Because when we did the last enrollment, uh, we didn't uh, enroll all the, 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 the children that are in the schools. But now we decided, uh, because His Excellency during the, this pandemic uh, decided that he will not send out his advisory children out of the state. And he also agreed that all those that are not wanted in other states should come back home. And because of that, uh, we have to uh, redouble the enrollment. So we are now set to enroll more, more of these children. And our target is about more than 80,000 of them, inshallah. Thank you, sir. We want you to briefly comment on uh, your relationship with uh, development partners for extra funding opportunities. Our relationship with development partners is uh, very cordial, and even if they will tell you that, uh, before the coming of uh, the government of uh, Honorable Dr. Bellum Tolomaradun, uh, the UNICEF and other development partners have already backed up uh, because uh, of the natural attitude of the former government. But when we came, uh, the, 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 the scenario changed uh, and they, they, they came back and we are partnering with them in almost everything. His Excellency approved uh, all counterpart funds amount to, to amounted to 93 million naira, and uh, the cash was given to us. And that is why you see all the trainings, the activities that uh, was told before are now going on. The training of SBMCs uh, and other trainings that are going on. Just recently, we just uh, yesterday, training of more than 5,000 SBMC members was concluded and we are on others because we have a counterpart uh, on them. We have enough now to pay our own. Parts. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman uh, Universal Basic Education of the First States. We really appreciate this, your excellent uh, presentation. Thank you. Dr. El Amin, if you can help us uh, unmute uh, Professor Maazu Yeah, Master I have been trying to find him, but I think he's offline. So maybe we can move to Dr. Mikael. I saw MG Abubakar recently. 
Yes. He's connected. Okay. So if we can omit him. While we do that, uh, we would like to appreciate uh, the many participants we see in this hall. It is quite impressive. And then I also take this opportunity to uh, welcome our father and uh, boss, Professor A. B. Muhammad, Head Department of uh, Pure and Applied Chemistry, Usumaru Danfodio University, Sokoto, and then other professors here with us. It's uh, Prof. Michel. Professor Lowell Mayanchi. Uh, Professor Lowell Mayanchi, you are welcome. Yeah. And uh, who again? Well, that's all. Yeah. I think uh, Haji Abinta is back. Yes. Let's, uh, let us uh, give uh, time to conclude her comments. Okay. If that's fine with you. So are we going to Haja Binta or are we continuing with Prof? If you can unmute the two, whichever comes first. Either Hello. Prof or Haja Binta. Hello. Yeah. Prof oh, is Prof is here. Yeah. And then yes. please uh, try to unmute uh, Haja Binta and uh, uh, Dr. Mikaelu too. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Prof. Yeah. We yeah. welcome you to this uh, important uh, session. Yeah. Professor Maazu Abubakar Gusau is the Vice Chancellor of the newly established uh, Zamfara State University. And uh, he is a professor of uh, biochemistry from uh, Usman Nufur University before he joined uh, Zamsu as the, the VC. Prof, we would like you to comment on the challenges and uh, possible solutions in our tertiary education in the first stage. And then you also tell us the condition of uh, your newly established university. What are your plans? Though we know that uh, we are forced by this uh, COVID situation, but we'd like to know something about uh, the plans you have for this uh, baby university. Prof. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, members uh, of the forum. Assalamu alaikum and uh, other higher dignitaries. Um, I will go straight because I understand that time is not on our side. Yes. So I will go straight to the issue of uh, challenges in higher education. In Zamfara, what we have is a serious crisis on education. And the problem is uh, sometimes those in charge of the education for the past, we tend to ignore our responsibilities. And these responsibilities keep on accumulating, keep on accumulating over time. And we end up in a serious crisis. But I hope with time, we will try to reverse this, thing, uh, this situation. Now, I will start with scholarship. Scholarship for students of higher education, i.e. tertiary education, is a biggest problem. Now, I, I think almost 15 years now, almost the scholarship or the Zampara State scholarship was collapsed. Students are not having scholarships and there is no payment for registration fees and students cannot even leave Zampara and go somewhere because of the challenges. Zampara State is ranked almost the most among the poorest in this among the states. And because of that, parents are facing difficulties in trying to support their words for training somewhere, particularly outside the state. So scholarship is important. And I now know that there is an initiation whereby scholarship will be now given to students and uh, they need to register and do all the needs schools and scholarship will be given to them. But I want to stress that this thing is important because that's how many of us Many of us that are in this position now, we use that scholarship 
for science, for art, for whatever, and we end up where we are. So I'm stressing, and that's why I pick scholarship as one of the issues. Very important. Now there is also issue of jam, jam registration and jam results. Now of the population in Zanfara cannot afford to buy that particular jam uh, registration. And sometimes you find even politics playing, you will see some organization giving us jam, and at the end of the day, the, the, the jam registration uh, will end up in the flight of those in the higher places, not the poor ones. So you find the number of candidates that we are presenting as a state is a shame. The number is a shame. The first state is always the last. You can count now from now to five years, it's either Yoto, Sokoto, or Zampara. But this year, we are the last. We presented only about 59,000. When a state that is not up to our population is presenting over 250,000. Now, jam, and with this jam, you find only the elite. Only the elites, their own wards and children are the one registering for that job. And hello, we can hear you, Prof. Okay, so yeah. only the elites are the ones that are now registering their wards and children for this job. And sometimes you find among the little that we present, most of them, more than 50% of them will be qualified to be admitted in higher education in higher institutions. But in most cases we find only about maybe one thousand to one thousand five hundred that will be admitted. All the other ones again will keep on waiting. Waiting, waiting until no longer they can wait. And now we brought serious crisis on our hands. You have people that are uneducated, unable to go to higher education, uh, higher institutions, and you have the bulk in the society doing nothing. And you know the consequence of that. Now, as I said, this year we only presented, sorry, I said 59,000, 9,000, 9,590. That's what we presented, 9,000 states. Some states are presented 250,000. So just imagine that. Now, let me go to the higher institutions, i.e. Uh, College of Education, Polytechnic, the university, and uh, other tertiary institutions in the state. Funding. <coughs> staff, staff. <coughs> Academic staff are quite often leaving the institution and sometimes when they leave the institution there is no proper way of recruiting them there is always replacement and this replacement is from the ministry sometimes you find somebody will be sent to a higher institution to go and fill the vacancy and that is a bad trend we have to stop that. We have to make changes to allow institutions to recruit and using the best practices. Otherwise, we are going to create problems that we cannot solve. Now, inadequate funding. Funding of and the releases of budget prohibition, especially in the areas of capital development. Sometimes I will give you example. The Zakas. Zampara State College of Art. Yes. The last time I think they have a new building was during Mahmuda. One, about two theaters were constructed for them. And that is it. Now you go back, the whole, the, the, the place is the same secondary school, the GTC. Those of us that are there in the science secondary school knows that the buildings are the same. It's the same GTC that was existing since in the 70s, 
is the one that is there, except the theater that is there. So there is no provision for capital development in our higher institutions. And funding is grossly inadequate. Now, because the funding is grossly inadequate, you find them running away from their responsibility. They are mandate. They are mandate. You find Zakas doing diploma program. You find Polytechnic doing other uh, programs that are not technical. So this thing is now accumulating and is having a bad image on us. And we have to find a way to solve this. So one of the ways is to try to have set budget provision for the tertiary institution, especially on the areas of capital projects. Now, lack of autonomy. Bureaucratic procedures in it's government it's ministries it's are affecting the operations of the institution. Bureaucratic procedures in government ministries are affecting the smooth operation of institution. Now, tertiary institutions should be given a level of autonomy through their governing councils to enable them operate from bureaucratic procedures of their MDAs. Now, MDAs, MDAs sometimes try to control uh, uh, an institution or trying to impose. Uh, there was a time even the HE has to intervene. Somebody trying to post someone uh, from Ministry of Education trying to post a, 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 a registrar in a higher institution or uh, somebody trying to post someone that one should not happen as an institution high education educational institute are supposed to be autonomous now inadequate and overstretched facilities now classroom laboratories hostels library poor teaching and research equipment which pose challenges of being denied accreditation Sometimes you find these things are not there till when it is time for accreditation. This institution will start running helter skelter, looking for money to do this. And you cannot do it just overnight. Overnight is just a window dressing. And window dressing in education, it always backfires because we should remember something that we are doing it to our own community. If we are not doing the best practices, then we are going to see it ourselves because it's our society. So I think here government also needs to complement the effort by making those provisions such as what is needed for accreditation before the time or the need pools to be done for the laboratories and hostels and libraries and what have you. So provision for maintenance of the facility such as classroom, laboratories, hostels, and libraries. Now, staff training and development, also a serious challenge. Now, government should complement effort of institutions such as TED Fund. TED Fund does exist. If we utilize it maximally, we will benefit. PTDF, NIDA, in training of staff of tertiary institution. Before now, tertiary institutions, in fact, there is no how. You raise Abdul Gusau Polytechnic, hardly you find three people, three individuals with PhD. But now, because of third fund, you will see them. They are there. College of Education, they are there. So if government is complementing this, before you know it, the indigenous will now take over the institution. And that will be good for us. Now. Shortage of professional staff, particularly in health institutions. Well, yes, nursing, technology, within and outside the country to bridge the gap, we have to find because with nursing, with the technology, you are doing nursing, but you don't have, you are doing nutrition and dietetics, you don't have expert. You have to find, you have to go somewhere and bring experts so that you now uh, achieve your aim. Now, Obstacle, laws establishing institutions. Sometimes you find the laws, 
conflicting, i.e. conflict between the laws. This here, yeah, the laws will say this and the other one. But I now know that because the SA higher education, they were trying to make sure that the laws are streamlined and so that for easy uh, governing and what have you. So because of that, you find replacement or other issues like issue of e-payment and TSA policies of government which affect institution will also as affect issue of funding and prevent replacement of staff where necessary maybe you have a program now just jalaluddin went for his phd i need somebody there to take his place because that cost has to be done so what shall i do i need somebody immediately now like that we have to find a way so solution tertiary institution should be exempted from TSA or something should be devised to cut out for their needs. Now, challenges in accommodation for both staff and students, everybody knows it. So we need to do more on that. So, and I will stop there based on problems of higher institution. Now, I will go to condition of our newly established Zampara State uh, University. Now, uh, this university, there were so many stories about it, but uh, I will try to give you just brief. The university actually was established sometimes in 2017. Most people doesn't know that. They, they, they only know that the university came to existence at the tail end of the last government. Actually, that is not it. It's was established 2017, the approval and everything. But the take up permission to start running now came in in 2018, i.e. the NUC, the NYSC, the uh, JAM, and what have you. That came in 2018. Now, 2018, yes, is there, but only in 2019 we start admitting. Why? If we refuse, we we'll end up facing serious problem. Now, the university, Zampara State in particular, we are the only one without state university. And the politics of establishing state universities is a lot. And I'm not here for that. But it has been established. Let us try to make use of it. That is my own policy. Let us try to make use of it. Now, when the other government refused to do the need school, the university tend to either be dead or alive. Neither. In between. It's neither surviving. <laughs> yes, it's neither surviving or it's not dead. So, but, and we have to find a way. Many of our professors that were in the committee uh, formally and informally through very good people that we keep on uh, getting in touch with and uh, at the end of the day hello we can hear you prof, hear you, prof. okay because my uh, yep, at the end of the day, yes uh, at the end of the day the he considered it very important and he now uh, officially decide that okay the university is here to stay and he made a big move and now appoint the management of the university, which uh, in Allah's name, I'm among those to manage the affairs of the university. And uh, uh, here we are. Now, the team immediately began its activity, but because of some challenges, its operation is minimal due to lack of requirement for the take up. So what are those challenges? Funding, funding of the university. As I'm talking now, the university is yet to receive any funds from the state, but almost everything is in process because we have done all the needfuls and we are waiting for the, that, the actual things to be done so that 
the university can take up properly. Like the issue of uh, take up grant, release of letters of recruitment, because we did the recruitment and the recruitments are there for the academic staff, monthly subvention for, from government as an overhead cost, official and utility vehicles, residential quarters and license office, now, the government has approved a new check of site, and that is, uh, in fact, with the assistance of uh, the, uh, the, the Tamadami. Tamadami actually play a greater role there, trying to give us the, the new check of site. And because for one reason or the other, maybe we have to leave the polytechnic. Now, payments of outstanding visiting lecturers for the first semester. We did first semester. And uh, up to now, we have not paid a single cobalt to all the lecturers. And that one is a serious blow on us. And uh, the government needs to do something there. Now, student enrollment. Now, the first enrollment, 2018-2019, we our quota is 1,000 1, students or candidates. And uh, we managed to admit 682. And out of this 682, 70% of them are from Zampara State. Now imagine 70% of this, nearly about 500, are sitting at home without admission, coupled to the other ones that are not qualified. It's a serious, so we need to do a lot. Now, some of the faculties that took up in that session are uh, faculty of science, faculty of art, management and social science, faculty of basic medical science, and that's our, where our challenges are. Medical, basic medical sciences, under normal condition, no university will start basic medical sciences immediately. But we are given that opportunities because of one reason or the other. But if we are not careful, we miss this opportunity, it will be a serious damage on us. Now, Faculty of Education, the last faculty. Accommodation for students. Now we are still using the Abdu Guso uh, Polytechnic. They borrow us uh, a student hostel, which uh, actually uh, the university renovate and uh, accommodation of the male student. While the host community, they renovate the female student hostel. The host community, uh, there were some good individuals there. They actually assist. In fact, some even give us donation of their houses for, but only the host community. Nobody else in Zamfara, only the host community, except one individual that gave us about 100 books uh, just immediately after the appointment. So, Prof, we want you to round up. Hello, Prof. Academic take up and consequently available structure were in Abdu Gusau Polytechnic, but later we are going to move to our new take up site, which, as I said, that one will be better for us, though there are challenges there, but inshallah we are going to handle it. Now, Prof, okay. Of 2019 first semester exams and uh, uh, two weeks, we actually is two weeks and the exams we are finished. We are waiting to, because of COVID, we are not able to actually start the second semester. So first semester is finished. Now, the next is third one, third one enlistment. We follow all the due process and at the end of the day, the university was enlisted by the third fund. So now we can receive grant. At least we are assured of the 2020 grant, regular grant. But even now, we have some uh, little ones that are small. Those ones, they are not uh, really the regular grant. But Special uh, intervention? Uh, not really special. Well, you may call it special intervention. 
something for research, uh, research and development office. It's just an office to be renovated and uh, taken care of so that research can take properly. So it's not something, special intervention is huge amount That's of right. money. Yes, but this one is just small. We are trying to move it to make sure that uh, we receive our own share. No matter Thank you what. so much uh, for your contribution, sir, Prof. Yes. Uh, federal, federal government needs assessment. Though I saw that Professor Yusuf is going to talk, I don't know whether yeah, you Yeah, Professor will talk about uh, needs assessments. But need assessment is my own because it came to my university, this one, where, where okay. I received certain funds and uh, they have been lying for almost a year because we are yet to do the need supposed to assess this particular fund. And uh, I'm afraid if the second batch is to come now, we may not be qualified to actually assess it. But this one is there. But we are trying our best to see that uh, very soon we assess this one. Hopefully, before then, they have not done the second batch of it. That's underneath assessment. What's okay. your of okay. to strike? Yes. So okay. the, the, the last one, second to the last, is 2019 to 20 admission 2019 2020 admission uh the jam has cleared us and uh, uh on 2019 we were supposed to admit 1000 students but because of the general problem you are not enlisted in the jam broker so students have to transfer so we are trying to see how we can help our community but unfortunately our community do not cooperate in most cases we have to go online to pay for them to do the changes and sometimes even text them to just go and do the needs post but majority of them will not do like uploading their NACO or YX they will not do it so we are only manage we only manage to admit 352 on this particular session. Now, the next session will be the 2019, 20, uh, 20, 20, 20, 21, which will start in Now, matriculation program. Matriculation program will soon start the matriculation program. As long uh, the issue of COVID. After the COVID, we are going to start the matriculation program. And the matriculation program is going to be for science program only. But that includes English and math. So five subjects we are going to do. So uh, the jam is actually crowning its base on that one. But inshallah, we are going to find because it's a way to assist our community. So we are going to do Thank you so yes. much uh, for the contributions, uh, Prof. Yes, we summary. really appreciate. Yes, I think, uh, summary, Prof. Summary, summary. Okay. The university management team commenced their activities immediately after the appointment, but due to lack of funds, the university operation is hindered, as highlighted above. Memos were sent to the state government for approval. Only few got approved while others are still lying up for approval. And we hope all those stakeholders involved will help us in trying to see that we have a proper checkup and utilize the opportunity. Thank you very much for this opportunity given to me. Thank you, my thank you so much, uh, Prof, for the excellent uh, presentation. Yes. Many people have been waiting to hear something about uh, the condition of uh, the newly established uh, State University, but your presentation now, I think uh, people are now convinced that uh, something is uh, in the pipeline. Uh, we now move to the next uh, discussants, next panelist. Do we go back to Hajia Binta to conclude on her comments, or we take uh, Dr. Mika Elu? I think we take Dr. Mika Elu and then we get back to her later at the end. Okay, of okay, 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 okay. That is great. Okay. Our next uh, panelist is. Uh, Dr. Mikaelu Ibrahim Barao. Mikaelu Barao is a, a technical advisor with a BFID, Department for International Development, and he's a coordinating a 
theory, popular and a program, reading and numeracy activity, which is under the DFID and the UNICEF. And then Dr. Mikhail is also a lecturer working for Usman Danfodio University, Sokoto. Like uh, Dr. Elamin Elia said, he's a uh, resourceful uh, person and then a role model to many matters and of Farah, including myself. Dr. Mikhailu, you're welcome to this hall. We would like you to comment on uh, effective teaching and learning, specifically quality teaching. You focus more on uh, teacher training, pre-service and in-service training. Then you talk about uh, relevant instructional materials, and then also comment on uh, learning assessments. All this in the context of our states. Okay, um, distinguished uh, panelists, um, esteemed participants. Um, good, good afternoon. It's already afternoon, or something. We started at eleven. Yeah. Uh, we begin with uh, expressing appreciation to Zambara Taikul first for this great initiative of bringing relevant stakeholders to discuss critical issues that um, relate to our state, Zampara, and for making education uh, a priority that um, for the second uh, part of the series, education happens to be the one. This is really uh, highly uh, commendable. So a word of uh, appreciation to the host, who is also the chair of the uh, cycle, and all other stakeholders that make this possible. I was given 10 minutes to speak on the issues of uh, quality education. It's 12.39 now, and I will try to see how much I can achieve within the 10 minutes given to me. Yeah. When we talk about uh, effective teacher training and materials, they are all within the bucket of quality education. And I'm now talking about the framework for um, education intervention in international development. We have three key components. The first is uh, access. The second is quality, and the third is governance. When we talk about access, what provision have you made to bring learners to school? Uh, the enrollment drive issues uh, mentioned, uh, building the schools within the uh, reachable areas for learners is, uh, they are all critical aspects of access. The second is quality. When you bring learners to school, whether it is uh, uh, primary school or secondary school, what provision have you made for them to learn effectively, not just come and waste time without learning? That's that sort of quality. And then the issue of governance. What happens to the ministries, to the boards, in terms of their capability to monitor, to support, to fund, to leverage resources to ensure sustainability? This also requires data to make decision, to know where you are and where you are going. All these are within the um, bucket of education governance. So I just want to contextualize. And what I'll, I'll, I'll talk about is within the context of quality. And as Jalaluddin uh, mentioned, I'm a technical advisor on RANA project, reading and numeracy activity. But I would like to also correct uh, something slight there. RANA is uh, funded by DFID, um, it's implemented by FHI 360. FHI 360 implements RANA through a partnership with UNICEF under Girls Education Project 3, which Tampara is uh, uh, part of. So these three partners, DFID, UNICEF, FHI 360, are involved in the funding and implementation of RANA. And I'm a technical advisor with FHI 360, not DFID. 
this is an oh. important uh, question that I have. Thank you so much. Having said that, well, there is what is called the McKinsey Report of 2007, which studied how 25 best effective education systems work and with focus on basic education. And actually that is one bias I have in this uh, check of mine. And the finding generally was that all systems of education that work today have focused on the teacher, the teacher factor. And that is why I'm dividing my presentation into three and making the teacher factor the first uh, of the items. The second item being materials provision, and the third, the aspect of assessment. So these three categories, teacher factor being the most critical, then materials, and then the issue of assessment. When we talk about the, the teacher, the first starting point is the pre-service component. How that treat, uh, teacher was trained in say the College of Education or the university or any teacher training institution. Because of the political landscape, when a state like Zampara is recruiting teachers, the possibility is that the state draws from teachers produced in surrounding colleges, because those are the kind of institutions that the citizens of the indigenous of the state can attend. So if we don't make our colleges of education function, the tendency of recruiting teachers that are not capable is, is very high. So the pre-service component, we need to see, we need to monitor the level of quality of training that is being provided in our teacher training institutions. Colleges of education, faculties of education in say, Zampara State, uh, in uh, Federal University of Kusau, in the state university that is coming up, in Udu's Usman Lovett University and other uh, surrounding institutions. And there are a number of components uh, that are required for the pre-service component to actually uh, work. How do you train teachers in their subject areas to be competent in um, school leadership and management? Because a teacher, a, an effective teacher, is not only about the subject uh, matter. How even that teacher can connect the school with the community. So the pre-service component, we need to know what is happening there because we, we always come back to that as a starting point. The second is the in-service component of it. No matter how qualified a teacher is, when you engage that teacher, time changes, innovations come. So you need to have an effective uh, in-service uh, train, uh, training system in place. And one of the requirements there is the teacher capacity needs assessment. You need to analyze your teachers, what kind of skill, uh, skills and competencies they have, and what kind of gaps they have. For example, a state can look at its teachers and know how many of them are ICT inclined, and how many of them are not. How many of them are effective early grade reading teachers? Because reading is key to learning. In, in, in foundation. How many of them are effective teachers of numeracy as foundation? So you need to do a sort of teacher capacity needs assessment. Know where your teachers are and make plans for training them. And one key submission that I will make in this regard is that for inside this, don't just draw teachers and start training them without certifying them. Put a kind of standard as to when a teacher attends a training, they will not be given just certificates anyhow for, for participation. But at the end of the training, they have to demonstrate the competencies that are required and be certified. And those certificates should be requirements for their promotion. So if a teacher comes to a training and that teacher is not focusing, uh, government is not just wasting its money, the teacher will know that he also, or he or she also has something to bear in that, in that regard. So an effective in-service training is, is really very critical and, and, and crucial. The other point after in-service is merit-based recruitment. 
you, you have to ensure that it as a requirement for teacher recruitment. Um, conduct an assessment, conduct an uh, interview, and it could be based on merit. Otherwise, when you take the wrong teachers, you spend a lot of money training them and you don't have uh, results in that, in that aspect. Teachers need to be motivated. When they are recruited, motivation requires that they have a good package, they get their promotions. These are the basic ones that I've been mentioned, but there is a lot more to teacher motivation than that. For example, if a state has a system of the best teacher award, or in every local government, at the end of the year, you have the best teacher award and those teachers are given a motorcycle or in the, in, in the, at the state level, a car or a high seat, you realize that and you provide standard for that. And that is unmistakable that this teacher deserves this award. It goes a long way in motivating um, uh, teachers. And there are several issues around motivation. So this is what I want to submit around uh, effective uh, 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 teacher. But what, what, I, I, permit me, before I move to the next point, to mention some instances in Zamfara State, uh, for example. As at 2018-2019, um, we Zamfara had 9,742 teachers in 1,560 schools. Out of those teachers, 67% are considered qualified in terms of having the um, required uh, qualification, minimum qualification of, of NCE. And uh, as part of those 9,000 teachers, 6,561 are in public schools, public primary schools. And the ratio of teacher to learner at that time was 87 learners to, to one teacher. And I had the commissioner talking about the need to take it down to 35, 47. And I, I, I don't think that from 2018, 2019, we have reached there, but it's good to um, be in that, in that picture. One, one other thing about a teacher that I need to em emphasize is that they need to be uh, monitored and mentored. Monitoring is very critical. We have seen instances in Zampara where it is too early to go to school at 10 a.m. And when you go at 12, you are too late. There is very minimum time given to instruction. That's what you call time on task. School opening uh, late, closing very early. So many things bring distraction. Farming season, when it is salad, uh, schools uh, close when it's Ramadan, schools close your time. So when you begin to count a lot, there is no time for instruction for, for teachers. So this issue of perspective about time on task is a critical aspect of teacher component. Now I'll move to the issue of relevant materials. After a qualified teacher, which you need in school, the next thing you need is to make sure that that teacher is equipped with the resources to teach. And the first that come in that regard is relevant books that are great appropriate. You need to see that the books, the books not only the books, but grade one have the appropriate materials for them, two, three, and, and so on. Also, UNICEF conducted a survey of book availability in six states, including Zampara. It was a very minor, uh, uh, small survey in only 30 schools in all, and six of them were from Zampara in 2017. And the finding was that there was no textbook provision cost in all the states, including Zampara State. So what is that talking about? What is your policy? Are you providing one to one ratio recommended for your learners. The, 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 the standard ratio is that every child should have a book for every subject. If you say education is free. And if parents are providing that, it's not free. So, so that one-to-one -one ratio, how, 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 where are you in that regard? A book of uh, household literacy, English literacy, numeracy, for example, religious knowledge, children, for them to be efficient. In addition to books also, you, you, you need to have other teaching and learning materials. Pencils, cardboard papers, chalk, um, markers, and, and the whole of that. We have seen very many instances in which instruction is stalled because of lack of these materials. There are, there are occasions when 
uh, donors provide books. But when you go to the class, you, you realize that um, children may not have uh, pencils to write. So how much of that is available and how much system of managing and um, uh, uh, maximizing the utilization of that is in place? So this is much um, I can say about that. But one other critical also aspect is uh, the ICT uh, facilities. They are also part of instructional materials. How much we have improved our schools to support the uh, uh, digital learning, a uh, basic understanding of um, um, uh, computer and, and, and digital resources. So, so this aspect of relevant materials is also very critical um, to effective. If I use the word uh, in the recycles about in revamping teaching and learning, much as we build structures. If we don't have teachers and there are no equipment, then we, we, we still see the kinds of challenges um, uh, we normally have. Now, I would like to talk about learning assessment because in, in most occasions, you realize that there is so much uh, emphasis on inputs, how much we provide in terms of saying that we train this number of teachers, we bought social number of books, or in terms of um, uh, uh, output that that kind of those kinds of books we have uh, uh, provided how much reading they have encouraged how much effective instruction has come from the kind of teachers you train in terms of outcome you, you need to have immediate outcomes and say for example we have invested in training uh, uh, teachers um, on reading on numeracy then what is happening with the reading abilities of learners? Unless you do an assessment, you can't, you can't see that. Then the final thing is the impact. If the impact will come after 5, 10, 20 years. That as a result of social investment, we now have this category of professionals in the state. We all know when, when model primary schools were created. And when you ask people now that are in certain positions, they may tell you that, yeah, I was a beneficiary of that model primary school pattern or some of the science and technical education board schools that were in place. So we need to see it, uh, our investment in education from the perspective of input, output, outcome, and impact. Impact will take much time, but we need to look at outcome. It's really very critical. But we don't really do um, uh, much of that. So in 2018, September, particularly. For the State Universal uh, Basic Education Board conducted EGRA and EGMA, early grade read, uh, reading assessment, EGRA and early grade math assessment. And these are the figures. The, the, the population for that assessment was 5,538 learners in primary one to, to three and cut, cutting across all the states. It was an interesting um, uh, assessment, and honestly, in terms of coverage and, 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 and everything. One, one of the indicators is that what is the level of letter sound uh, identification per minute? That means the ability of learners to identify letters within a minute. You'd be su surprised that for Hausa, 53% of learners could not identify letter sounds. While 55%, uh, okay, 76% of the uh, learners could not read a single word in a minute of how to start. For English, 61% of them could not read uh, a letter sound of, of English in, in English expression per minute and its 2% could not read a single English word. For EGMA, early grade math assessment, letter, uh, 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 number identification, 55% of the learners could not identify numbers. You show them three, four, five, six, randomly they could not identify. And 48% of them, could not distinguish numbers. When you show them one and two to distinguish, they could not distinguish. This assessment was not done by an external partner, was done by the state. The data was collected by the SSOs of Zamfara State. 
and the presentation was made before the uh, chairman of that of that time. So one interesting thing is to do this assessment because you know where you are, and the may not be different from uh, other states in this respect. But then our concern is this state for now, and you know where you are. Then what are you doing about that? So that you come after a year or after six months and see how much of this has changed. So one important submission I would like to make is the state needs to uh, be outcome focused. The state needs to be outcome focused in terms of making this assessment. And through the GAP3 intervention, the run intervention, I would say that Zamfara State is ahead of many states in Nigeria, if not the best in terms of this capacity. Um, more than 100 um, uh, school support officers were trained on uh, tablet-based data collection, and more than 30 uh, personnel of the states were trained on how to uh, utilize this data, analyze it, and make informed uh, decisions. So on this note, I would like to conclude by saying that if we really want to improve and revamp the education system uh, of Zampara State, we need to focus on the factor of teacher and ensure that we have an effective teacher that got the right training from pre-service, got the right uh, uh, entry engagement. I, I will provide an example here. When I was first uh, recruited as um, a staff in Osman Nampore University, Sokoto, we had uh, an interesting orientation where the very best of resource persons, former vice chancellors, were invited to give us an orientation. So if you recruit teachers, for example, you bring people who are seasoned teachers, even see the, seeing them, talking to them about their experience as teachers, is a great motivation. And the Zambora State has a resource for that. The Zambora State Teacher Training Center that was put in place by the last administration was like no other in the country. There, there, is a lot of, there are a lot of facilities that make this kind of in-service training and engagement in the You need to have from recruiting of the children. Then you also need to have a good system of uh, programs. Please unmute, uh, Dr. Very critical to that and other instructional materials. Then finally also, you need to have focus on, on an assessment, learning assessment that aggregates where the learners are and where they are expected to be. You need to have benchmarks saying that this is our target and you reflect every time and get to know where you are. Otherwise, you invest resources and those resources, even if they get there, they may not produce the best result. But when you are doing assessment, you begin to interrogate yourself, interrogate the system and say, what is really happening? And monitoring, Mentoring of teachers is really very critical uh, in ensuring quality education. But I think these three uh, items are critical. And um, when there is any opportunity to come, I may provide more instances and um, uh, 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 examples to. Uh, wow. This is mind blowing. <laughs> I was so moved by the presentation that I forgot my status as the moderator. This is an excellent, uh, Dr. Mikael. We really appreciate. And I trust that uh, the Commissioner of Education and uh, Chairman Ubeck are already taking note of uh, some important issues you, you have raised. Chairman, do we take uh, Haji Abinta before we move to? The last uh, Haji, Haji Adinta is not online, so we okay, okay. have a muted prof. No, uh, she's but, here. But before you move on, um, Haji let me is here. a little comment on what Dr. Mikael has presented. Um, okay. I hope, uh, as you said, the chairman of UBEC and the commissioner of education are taking note because we have taken note and we will be looking into it and we will monitor you whether you have taken note and you have implemented the policies you suggested. And we will push you to the limits. Do not think we don't like you. We want them for us to develop. And if it means pushing you to the limit, we are going to do it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. I think uh, Haji Abente is here. Can you unmute her? Dr. Ali, you? Yeah, she's. Uh, <laughs> her. 